Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Today it is Cars and Bids live event. Yep. There is a live Cars and Bids event appearing right before you. It appears every Wednesday. It's right here. It's right us. <laughs> Today we have with us Kenan. Hello, everyone. Yeah. You're wearing a great jacket, Kenan. Thank you. Okay. I have a variety. And we have um, Filippo, who's yep. going to talk to us also. Yep. Filippo. Why don't you start us off by telling us about cars? Sure. Well, right now we have a GL63. Can we click on that? I'm obsessed egg. with this car. I just, I'm sorry. I was distracted with this. That intro is bad. And the reason is because I'm distracted by this GL63. I love this car so much. Uh, this, well, as the, we've discussed previously, Porsche Cayenne's, you know, quite, quite a buy. This is a 500, what is it? 550 horsepower, 50 horsepower, 50 horsepower, horsepower. SUV. <laughs> and current, wow. the current bid is $20,563. The, there was a time about, Man. I don't know, eight years ago? Some of that when Doug bought an E63 AMG wagon. But before buying that car, yeah. strongly considered a GL63. I really wanted a GL63. Wh- I test drove one. I was like pretty sure. Huh? You just weren't enough of a... I think, I think it was just too big. It's huge. It I think at the vehicle. time I didn't have kids. I would, I would actually be more interested in it now, but I don't really want an AMG to transport my children for various reasons. Um, but this thing is so, it's cool. so cool. I still love them. I, God, I saw one in the neighborhood the other day. Did you really? Yeah, some guy driving oh, It's a, a GLS 63, but still. What a dream. And I'm just like, oh, this dude is killing it. And I'm sitting over here on an E450 all-terrain. Right. Yeah. Right. They you could have had 200 more horsepower. V8. And it's Yesterday, I was driving my E450 all-terrain, and the tire pressure light went on. Oh, no. Not again. A different tire. Eh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was that story going somewhere? <laughs> no. no I, all right. I... It hasn't gone any lower, so what do you? I'm just gonna fill you it up. Leave it, yeah. I looked everywhere on the tire, and I didn't see anything. Oh, look at sold, that. It sold for twenty thousand five sixty three for a five hundred and fifty horse twin turbocharged Mercedes GL sixty three. We sold that giant car. truck too. Go to that giant truck. Go to the giant truck. What giant truck do you? Which giant truck? Okay, okay, go to pass auction. <laughs> <laughs> we sold this giant truck today. That, Look at oh, this. Oh, yeah. We sold that really nice F450. What yeah, yeah, yeah. is the good. size of this truck? I kind of want to review one of these. Where in Texas was this? It does indeed have Texas plans. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that, that I assume, guess yeah, plan. plan. <laughs> um, it's, Man. He, Doug recently will be, or soon will be coming out with a video about an F250 Super Duty. The, but this, the, the, new the F250 is like child's plate compared know, to this thing. But that, w- that truck was great and luxurious. And I can only imagine that this, this is. Has, you know how many awesome. wheels this has? Yeah. Six. There might even be a spare <laughs> tire. No, T- yeah. You know how many tires this has? Do you know how much, you know how much how aluminum it has? Look at that. Bill Utter have? sold this thing and the mud flaps. <laughs> what are the, the engine specs? Because it has the, the diesel. Sure thing. Um, so with this one, this is... 935 yeah. pounds 935 of torque. 935 pounds of torque. Man. It really makes that GL63 look um, weak. Sold for sixty nine five. How many miles were on this vehicle? This one has forty four thousand. That's not so bad. It makes GL sixty three look weak, yeah. <laughs> but the difference is this truck is not all that fast. Although that F two fifty I had the other day was slow. in fact pretty fast. But uh, wow, right, Ken, can we look, look at what? what the you only want to look at what's coming up next. I, I want to see I have the a history. Card that I, really I want to know what about. is behind us, Wait, which is. This, this is cool. TLX Type S PMC. Yeah, pull up Kenan's screen here. This thing is really cool. Oh, all right. It, th- this is a 2023 Acura TLX Type S PMC edition. And yep. the PMC edition yep. means that it was made at the Performance Manufacturing Center in Ohio. In Ohio. Where they this the is a TLX, one of 300, that is hand built. Hand built TLX. At the NSX factory. Yeah. That's just cool. And it looks cool. Well, here's the thing. It doesn't look any different than the other no, type S's, except for the wheels yeah. and the color. Okay, well, that, that's well, those about 80% of what I'm... <laughs> a lot about how the car looks. But like it, 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 I, I, find the, I find this fascinating. <laughs> it doesn't look the same, except it has a very different I find this fascinating appearance. for two reasons. Jeez. One is, it's a hand-built right. Acura sports sedan. Right. Uh, why? Right. Like, what were they what, what, Why did they bother? It, performance-wise, same exact car. But also, it's so cool. Like... Yeah, we we don't think about this car enough. Think about if if, if wow, it's BMW, numbered. Yeah. it's numbered. It, it, it's it's one of one hundred in that color, and then there's a hundred that are white and a hundred that are blue. Oh, um, wow! It, 
like imagine if if BMW came out with a hand built M3 Road right. 300. We'd be talking about that for weeks. Yeah. Kenan would still be thinking about that Kenan every day. would be thinking about it as he falls asleep in it. Right. Although sometimes But for some reason we don't hear despite the fact that it's from Kenan's Sometimes I view when when a thing is advertised that it's hand built that's just code for the mirror will fall off. Like that's No, they but have this isn't tolerances. So this is accurate. Kenan, this was nice. built by Ohioans just like you. Yeah, my fellow my former statesman, I guess. <laughs> states women, but I I don't know. Kenan, people in Ohio went to work at the NSX factory, and instead of building NSXs that day, they built a TLX. And then they put a badge on it that signified which number it was in think, that color. Do you think they were like, they, they got, you know, it was issued that, okay, we're going to start building these as well. And they went, what? Let, no, just, I think the, so the factory it's, it's workers so were probably cool. very Isn't excited. It's an, cool, an but like. RDX PMC or an MDX? Some I didn't car. even know this car existed until we listened. Really? It. Yeah, I didn't know. Wow, that. a rare blind spot in Doug's knowledge. <laughs> well, you want blind spots. Can we get this GTR closer. Can you tell us anything about this GTR? Any single thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Don't pull it up yet. What do you What do you know about 3. a GTR? 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. The, this one has a bunch of performance mods, including a different turbocharger. Isn't it a 3.8 liter? 3. 8 liter? 3. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. 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 All wheel drive. It gets the automatic. First thing wrong. Has has been identical. How many for the wheels last does it have? Felipe? 13 years. Um, the, the GTR. We all know and love it. You know because it, it has been identical. It looks a little like the Cybertruck from this angle. I see that. I think it's partially the I, color that's impacting that right now. Yeah, but it's also the fact that the it comes up and then it goes down. It's like there's like a triangular situation with the glass house. Have, Although have this you driven is, a modified uh, R35 GTR? Well, no, yeah, sort of. <clears throat> I, I went one time. I was in San Antonio actually when I ideated cars and bids, and I toroed one. Oh, and uh, that's what you were driving in San Antonio was a. Really? Yeah, I just was like, I'm I thought you had a GTA. rule that in Texas you just drive Suburbans. Yeah, that rule I think was made after <laughs> okay. this event because I drove, the, I toured this GTR and it was so rough and so loud. And I, this I, one, I stayed in an Airbnb like in a residential neighborhood, and I would start this thing to go and film, and because I was there like two days filming, and it was just so awful. You couldn't go over speed bumps. What's I mean, the one I, I this one is nice. The one yeah, I drove was clapped out. And that's one of the reasons I did it. It was on Turo for like one ninety nine a day for yeah. a GTR. I was like, yeah. It, it just, it's fascinating that it's been effectively the same car since it came out in It's 09. good. Look at that. How many Whatever. GTRs are on Nova Scotia plates? That's a <laughs> great one. point. That is, yeah. Not many. <laughs> one. And that one's headed to Toronto and when it sells <laughs> on the site. Um, I do love the, the other about GTR. Um, Kenner, would you like to talk about the, uh, Filippo, another, another, uh, thing that you would like to discuss the Toyota Land Cruiser that's ending right now. Oh, sure. Yeah. Can I, can, can you go to it? Of course. All right. JDM turbo diesel yep. lifted. Yep. Right hand drive. Yep. Uh, and it's in Hawaii. It's in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and can, the, can you scroll down to modifications, please? There are several. TRD branded oh, wow. engine oil cap. <laughs> You know, this well, is one if, of the. If, if anybody ever wants, <laughs> wants to, if anybody accuses us at any point of not being thorough in our Dude, vehicle listings, please observe. We're too thorough. <laughs> no, that is a, not something that needs. To be <laughs> <laughs> well, that is pretty. Thorough. I, I, I do appreciate that it's a JDM Land Cruiser, but they've they've added an uh, LX450 source grill and headlights to go make back it look up, more like up. the. They made the it US look more like the version. Lexus. Yeah. Do you think in Japan there's like it does a, like everybody it, it does, does. Yeah. Everybody here tries to make their LX450 look like a Land Cruiser. Do you think in Japan because the LX450 was surely never sold right. in Japan? You think there's a culture of like oh there's a the Lexus version greener. sold in America? It, it does yeah. have the little parking mirror, which is incredibly useful. I drove in Japan and. I used that, and it's unbelievable how useful it is. The reason people don't put it on their cars is because it is unbelievably ugly. It's actually not for parking. It's, it's for blind spot. Right, that one's for blind spot, yeah. It's beautifully located for blind spot, and it's incredible, and it is exceptionally ugly. I don't think it's ugly at all. I think it's charming. You think it's, it's very Japanese. Yeah. I mean, it's, Yeah. <laughs> It's not a triumph I, design. I, do you remember in the early 80s you when know, the Japanese that, cars sold to America only had one, a driver side mirror and you had to pay extra for a passenger side mirror? This car's got three mirrors. As a, as a kid, in, up for in, it. In, in, up for in it. Italy, it as a kid, out. we only had a driver side mirror. <laughs> right. Our, our, Fiat, our Fiat Punto only had a driver side mirror. Man. Started from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Dude only had a driver side mirror. And look at him now. Now he's got look a Mercedes E-Class wagon got, and a convertible He's Italian. got two mirrors. He's got an That's interior. Cool. He's got a backup camera. <laughs> got, got this a front is the camera, American actually. story right here, ladies wow. and gentlemen. Bidding continues. These are the Valuing these I find incredibly difficult. Because obviously the, 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 the diesel is desirable. They're yeah. incredibly reliable, yeah. including the diesel. 
it's different. Yeah, so there's like a nice example. There's a lot of 80 series that are coming into the United States, and yes, it is hard to value them because it's hard to really understand what people yeah. want and what they don't want. Because the 80 series, the U.S. cars are pretty easy to value. They were all relatively made the same. There was a big change in 93. Uh, but the Japanese ones, it's like, ooh, what's going to happen? Would I have predicted that someone would, 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 would pay 19450 yes. for a Hawaii monster truck version? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool, though. I'm into it. I honestly monster don't know. I, 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 20. There, Hawaii Monster Truck, 20 grand. And there's multiple bidders. Um, love to see it. We have a lot of amazing cars on the docket today. We already talked about the PMC edition TLX. I, know, but I, I do think we should talk about it a little bit more. Because... <laughs> It's a hand-built You really Acura. want to talk about I, this I do, car. because I... It's weird. He's, no, he's right. I, this I really is weird. I think that there's not nearly enough conversation about it for being a hand-built Go to car. Go back to Kenan's screen there. This is, this is an unusual vehicle. Also, what was like, going on? Why did right. this happen? And I swear there was an, an, an RDX PMC. Can you look it up? Acura RDX PMC is so Kenan, cool please? in that they are trying to... If other... You're right. If other brands did something... No, no, no. Yeah, it's not, it does exist. If other brands were doing the stuff that Acura was doing, no, I just looked it up. It's orange. Well, no, I know, but like it's orange. Here's the thing: they not only did Acura do this with their midsize sports sedan, they also did it with their midsize crossover. Now, yeah, Kenan has no idea what an Acura RDX bizarre. is. Periods, which is why he had to ask me five times <laughs> what it's called. RDX, right? Wait, um, I thought it was MDX. Kenan, it's been 18 years, man. <laughs> uh, but like, <laughs> came out in 05. This, this is fascinating. <laughs> I, I love that they're doing this. I don't know why they're doing it, but it's so cool. And if, like, if you're right, if other brands did limited edition hand belt, Acura is so interesting. <laughs> they're like, they don't Thank have you. the performance cred of other brands, but they, ha they do cooler stuff. Imagine right. if, imagine if legitimately Kenan would not have stopped talking about it. Oh, if there was a hand belt M3, oh my Lord. If there was a hand belt M5, M5. God. If, First if, off, if, it imagine would be a if, imagine if, if his E39 and M5 were hand built. That's you know, right, I it saw wasn't. It was the first that wasn't. The on the E34 way, E34 M5 was hand built, and they switched away from it. Now E34 M5 is in right. a rattle a lot. Though. On the way to work today, I saw a blue Le Mans blue, heinously modified E39 M5. That's tough to see. A lot of them are. <laughs> if that car just weren't modified, it would be yeah, lovely. Right. But, you know. but decisions but were made when they were cheap. But no, no, I mean, yeah, it probably would be something I would mention. But I, I, it, what know. do you mean? But people, okay, well, when you what see do you mean, it, it'd probably an, an, an be individual color M5. Oh, no, no. M5. You're like, you no, know, no, I mean the handmade thing. Of yeah, course, of course I would know. You'd every time I see an M5, it's a special moment. I see one in my garage every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a special moment every day. It is. I go down to it to play tennis in the morning against you two. I'm like, dang. Right. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Right. And then it doesn't warm up enough, and it's a shame. Yeah, I got one today. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, the it's like it is. Uh, I don't know why this more top of the conversation. Is I agree. Model? There's a hand built TLX. If can, can you go down to the specs? It's what like 350 if there something had horsepower. Been, if there, if there had been, like, could you imagine if Porsche did drive? a limited 300 production run of the 911 that was hand built? Right. Oh, it would be so every every person on the watch sure, groups but, would know, talk about it. Ultra suede interior. Ultra suede. Well, they aren't. I don't right. think it's different. That that interior is what the regular one. Correct. Is. Which is what, like, like like also why are you getting the detriment of this? Why are you hand building a car and then changing the wheels? <laughs> because and the color. They didn't want to mess with it. I they know, didn't have. They just had all the parts. Over I, there. For what it's worth, did, did you review a TLX Type S? Yeah, I did a TLX Type S. It was Tiger Eye. Well, what did you think? I, I didn't hate it. Um, I really the th problem is I really like the Integra Type S. Yeah. Like I, I like I like the Integra Type S more than Canon, and mm. so it was hard to justify a TLX Type S when the Integra Type S is there. I mean I know it's smaller, but it's not much smaller. Yeah, and it's a hatchback. Which come on. Yeah. All right. You know? We'll turn back to this in about 15 minutes because I do want to talk about it again then, but we can, can move on for right. Okay. Now. There's a lot more good stuff. Wait before you go to that. There, you know there's a. Um, Touareg V10 that's ending. There sure so. is. Wow, that's continuing. So a couple of things. Goodness. So the, the Land Cruiser the Hawaii continues Monster truck to is continuing. On, so that's great. Which, um, Go to the Touareg. All right. Yeah, V10 TDN. I mean, How many miles? This, this one has 150,000 miles. Oh, great spec. I'm going to advance a theory it's about a these fact. V10 TDI Touaregs. I don't think they're as unreliable as people say. I think they're. I believe that. I think they're difficult to maintain, but I don't think they're necessarily unreliable. That that's could be true. That's my understanding of the car. Okay, we have now auctioned... Look how cool. We I have know. now auctioned. This is our 17th Touareg V10 TDI auction. Our you know 17th. Skip to the, the, I legitimately love dirty, but man, the, look at that. I love the Touareg. It's the first generation Touareg. I love this color combo <laughs> with the tan interior, brown interior, whatever it's called. Yeah, Teak, I think they call it. Yeah. And then it has the coolest engine. 
We have sold, of the 16 Tuareg V10 TDIs we've auctioned, we've sold them all. Wow. Look at yeah. that. And we'll sell this one since it's no that's reserve. That's right. Here's an interesting Tuareg fact. Stay on that picture a second. Here's an interesting Tuareg fact. When the Tuareg first came out in 03, you're going to love this. They had wind noise problems because of the um, roof rack. And oh. so what Volkswagen did, I swear to you, what I'm about to tell you is true. What Volkswagen did was they, from the factory, put the two crossbars of the roof rack together in the back, and it eliminated the wind noise problems. And as a result... <laughs> Are they, like, on sliders? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, wow. it, I don't know if it's sliders or if it's just you have to or remove it. just have it to unclip it and move it but, forward. <laughs> but as a result, all... I mean, you, this person's never used their roof racks, and you can tell because they either... Or they have, and they just put them back in the back. But you can tell which Tuareg owners have used their roof racks and which ones haven't based on which ones that that just left them in the back. Ball Tuaregs? All, all the early down. ones, they later then went to roof rails, I think. But, but all the early ones, that was done wow. to, to solve the wind noise problem. Was it a solution for the wind noise problem? Of course not. Because it didn't actually address the issue. <laughs> but it did for people who weren't going to be using the roof rack. And that right. is your Tuareg fact of the that's day. That's a great Tuareg Wow, that's a, that's a guy. Can we also up, no. talk about, I, I, I'm just really focused on automakers doing weird things today. Okay. Volkswagen. Yeah. Which made the Golf and yes. the Jetta and the Passat. Right. <laughs> then made a very off-road focused... SUV, for some reason. And then because put a V10 the platform TDI. existed. I think the platform is, I know, but like, isn't it fascinating? Like, imagine if today... Well, you got to remember, like, PX at the time, like, it was this... Yeah. I mean, think about the cars they were making. Volkswagen... The, the Phaeton alone... It doesn't make sense in retrospect, and it didn't make sense at the time, but Volkswagen's strategy was, at that time, they wanted to be a competitor to Mercedes-Benz yeah. while Audi was a competitor to BMW. And that was their now. stated yeah. goal. Which is wild. It made no Compared sense to, to anybody, especially to Americans who don't really distinguish between Mercedes-Benz and BMW. We were like, right. what are you talking about? But they tried it. So they had the Targ and they had the Phaeton. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the Passat was nice. Passat the Passat was, was based on an A4. It was like a nice car. Yeah. Um, as opposed to the like new Passat, which is a just a Camry. I mean, it's a car. NMS but it's flat platform. What's that? NMS. NMS. Right. New midsize sedan. Yep. <laughs> Kenan's lost yeah. now, that, now that we've moved like, on from like, the Tuareg okay. and the, 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 the he's yeah, like, I don't know. Lost me. New the, Passat. The, the, the Tuareg still exists, but it's not sold in the U.S. or Canada. Um, they sell the, oh my God. What is Already it? on. No, no. What, the Atlas. The, 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 the Atlas. Um, <laughs> what? Sorry, Dave, one of our team members who owns Atlas. Uh, instead. But imagine if today they came out with an, an off-road focus. It SUV. was an it insane would, it, decision even like, then. It was today, too expensive. It would, today it would work. Everybody it wants off-road focus SUVs. It would work except for the they fact, it was work years, except for the fact that this soon. was not an off-road focused no, SUV. It was, it was a luxury ish. SUV. But it, was, it had great off-road. But it was like ability. 80 grand. That was the problem. It was, it was a luxury SUV Did first. Did show that MSRP? listening? Does it uh, have a sticker? It had a window sticker. Let's Does it have a sticker? No, it's a build sheet. No window sticker. So um, unfortunately not. Does the build sheet show? Oh, uh, these are cool. Bit. Now, in Europe, they, mm -hmm. they made V12 TDIs. Uh, I think you saw ones, but I saw a Q7 V12 TDI, yeah. That was a great interior. This is such a great spec as well. Go yeah. back go back to that that first interior pick right there. That for, oh, Gosh. that steering wheel and that gear selector yeah, yeah, yeah. that made it seem like you were pu oh, yeah. pulling up on yeah. an airplane. Oh, yeah. that was legit. But no one could understand why it was coming out of Volkswagen, the company that gave us the new Beetle. What, why don't we <laughs> collectively own a so car? I don't want one. I don't, I don't need to tow. I don't want to deal with I don't one. Need I don't to tow, need to tow. But, I, but if you did need to tow a plane, it's a car to get. If I needed to tow a plane. Well, it, wasn't, there, wasn't there like a press event? Where the V10 TDI? No, 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 no. That was the Toyota Tundra no, towed the space shuttle. The Twarg V10 TDI towed a plane on Top Gear. It towed the Boeing 747 on Top Gear. It also, of course, beat a Ford whatever in that famous C internet Wait, video. go back to go back to pictures. There. <laughs> Can you tell me, Filippo, <laughs> automotive expert Filippo, All right. what do those up-down arrow buttons do? Just the up-down rocker. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, obviously, the, the one on the left is lumbar and such, the, the right, dial. Right. I was going to say that the lumbar, the, that moved the up or down. But what does the up-down arrows do? Kenan, I'll take it from you also, if you know. This is some deep 2000s Volkswagen Bentley knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? All right, I was, was going to say that, that I'll give you a hint. You will never think of it in your entire life. <laughs> Headrest up-down? Oh, you're close, actually. So the headrest no. has a separate one. Yeah, the headrest has a separate one. You're right. <laughs> um, I have no idea. That controls the um, the seat belt. You know how oh, it, you can move the seat belt up or down in your wow. car with by pushing well, a thing and then moving it? No, I don't, because the M5 has a Bowden cable that goes to it, so it does it on its own automatically. <laughs> you don't have to adjust it at all. It just adjusts. Okay, well, in a normal car, right? Which is annoying if you have a. 
shorter is fast, for example. That car, that was how you did it Do in you that think car. Was it tied to, me- to the memory setting? Probably. That's probably why it That'd was be electronic. The dream. Yeah. Um, do we get questions today? Yes, we, we do. Let's go to a question. Ooh, are these all new questions? They are indeed. Oh my gosh. Let's start at the top. <laughs> I love starting at the top. <laughs> Braden Lash, Miata or BRZ slash GR86 and Y. <laughs> it's Braden. Miata. Miata. Will Young. What is <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kenan doesn't want to go in order. Fine. Mm-mm. What is your favorite generation of Land Cruiser? What is my favorite generation of Land Cruiser? The 200. It is really? It is not a popular opinion, but the 200 so is the best you, one. You currently own a 200 series Land Cruiser. Yeah. I'm selling it. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's, one. <laughs> that's what I was building to. The, the 40s are kind of rough and the 55s, and then the 60s are just, just they feel too old. 80s I like, but they're slow, and they're starting to just feel so many of them are just getting rough. And hundreds are nice, but they're, the 200 is the better 100. The 200 is the one. That 5.7 V8 will kill you. <laughs> okay. It'll leave you stranded <laughs> on a beach or what? No, that 5.7 V8 is just stronger and better than you. Like when, <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, like me and Ken wake up at 3.30 and we, do, right. we, get, we get six workouts in by eight. <laughs> We're still not as strong as the iForce V8. <laughs> That's the truth. Well, if you want to buy a Doug's Land Cruiser, just wait. A uh, question from Summers. When is Jug buy an E60 M5? Never. But? Not never. You, you wouldn't buy an E60 M, A61 M5? Yeah. And then Kenan's buddy Ryan is going to convert it to stick for me. This is six years from now, though. Uh, Preston writes, Doug, what is your opinion on the 2020 Cadillac CT6V? Can we discuss this for a second? Was I discussing it with you or with you? I was, was it with me? It was, I don't think it was me. Okay. This but, is something insane I've learned. You know about this car? Yeah. Cadillac comes out with a CT6V Blackwing. For this year, was for in 20, only, right? Yeah. Well, do you know what ended up happening? They only made like 500. Right. They, sold they a couple, put by the way, Kevin, tens of millions of dollars into the powertrain. Pull up a picture of this we, car. We, we've sold a couple. You know, Have we like, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. They put tens of millions of dollars into the powertrain. They never put it in any other car, and they sold literally like a couple hundred. Look at that. We've had five. I well, sold three. It's wild. What do they sell, huh? 80s, evidently oh 81. According to, to be fair, how much were they new? They must have been 100 or something. There's a there's a long road and track article about this that apparently Cadillac like developed the motor, realized they didn't need it for anything else. There was a shakeup in leadership. They bailed on it. Oh. The engine only ever went into this car, and even then, they only made a few hundred. Well, you know, Cadillac has a great history of building reliable V8s. Well. So wow. it's bound to go well when it's only made for... Only 875 were made. Was it based on an existing... No. The they one, right, the fully developed fully it. New. And, then they, and then the car was canceled and the engine was canceled and everything went to hell. Wow. That's, this is a rare car. Yeah, this is rarer than an F40. What's in the CT5? <laughs> Blackwing? What, what, what's the engine? It's a different motor. Different That's the thing. They're still yeah. calling it Blackwing, but it has no relation to this. And it's... Incredible. Kenan, have you considered this? We're going to talk about the CT5 no, Blackwing. 825 oh, right. in the US, 50 in Canada. Wow. Oh, that's only for 19. Grand total is 1475 units. So F40 is, because there were 20s also. Oh, okay. So F40 right. is F40. a little bit rarer but than CT6V Blackwing. Like 90. <laughs> 90. There were 1400 we, US cars. We auctioned a Canadian spec one. We auctioned one of the, one of the there's only 75 total in Canada <laughs> for both model years. Wow, so it's 75 in Canada, so it's as rare as the F512M. So there's 75 U- North American F512M. Wow. So there you go. Wow. There you are. Can we move on? <laughs> Flipper doesn't know what that this car is. This is such a cool car, and it doesn't get any, any discussion or praise or any interest by anybody ever at any point. Uh, Touareg I, V10 I, I TDI. Think we should get started talking about... Oh, you want to talk about fun. you want to talk about Kyle? Yeah, so, so Sab Kyle 04, which is who is one of the most prominent automotive YouTubers. Sab Kyle 04 is a it's is an absolute legend, legend and idol of mine. Yep. I've never communicated with him. I don't even during this process I didn't even Kyle, communicate. Kyle, if you're with watching, him. please. But Sab Kyle 04, <clears throat> to my knowledge, he started YouTube in the dark ages, like 2009. He may have oh, started. Yeah. He may have started. Oh, no, no. He was right there with the founders. <laughs> and he was like the first car reviewer. Like, I think his dad had a used car lot. He's in can the you, South. Can you go to South California? He's YouTube in North Carolina. Find his oldest video. And he just started He's making Carolina, videos. Yeah. He's in North Carolina. Yeah. yeah. He started making videos about cars before any of us were making videos about cars. Oldest, and he is like oldest. the legit OG first car First video YouTuber. was 15 years ago. 
Which is kicker sub and a Lexus ES three fifty. And then his his <laughs> his, his, first his thing for such a long time was I, his family had a dealership or he had a family out of friends. He would go to the dealership and do all his very are- ex- very intricate in depth tours of, of vehicles. Right, like literally that, all of these videos are Lexus ES three fifty content. But okay, here you can kind of see this one the starts. Anybody the C46 who, anybody who kinda... thinks that Kyle Sob Kyle O five started doing like American car stuff, which is kind of what I think of him as now, or hell, maybe he started. You thought he started doing sobs. He was no. ES three fifty content first and foremost. Look how clean that RX three hundred right. is. Wow. <laughs> this is a new car at the time, <laughs> right? But like, he, he he would do these for for all the cars at that at a bunch of dealerships. Right? He how would, did he, would he start get... up? He would do a tour. It was where you went for like in depth. Oh, it totally was. Is that fifty k views on that MKS or thirty k? He's 30. the only guy who ever got thirty thousand views on a 09 MKS. Right, let me tell that's you. a fact. And no stabilization whatsoever. I yeah, I was a huge. Oh, fan it was of, old of school. Sub Force too. I, you were? Oh, huge. Yeah, I used. To, but there was a time when his reviews were like twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. I was like, man, you really learned everything. Then they got to like 30, 40 minutes. It's it was, the problem like, really that we all long. have, which is like you want to add more info. And right, you want to add more depth. Add. And then you lose some people who were just kind of casuals, but now you've gained people who are like really... But in. I love this format. Take care, everybody. A- yeah. Anytime <laughs> I, was, I was interested in a car, if you want to actually learn anything about it, you go to South Carolina. That was exactly right. For so years, percent, you, you replaced that at some point. Don't with course say and teachers. that. I don't want to have replaced Sorry. South Kyle. You, you, have, you, well, you evolved the form. You added to that repository of content. Look at that. For dual Memphis subs and a Mazda 3. 90,000 views. Guys looking to put dual Memphis subs in their Mazda. Keep going down. Uh, what are they the, I, there's, this is my favorite video he ever did. It's the 2009 <laughs> Wildfire. Now, my friend Ryan and I are what? obsessed with this. This was a car that was built in Steubenville, Ohio. It has three wheels. It's mid-engine and an absolute pile what of junk. What motor is it? I don't know. It's, it's a motorcycle engine. motorcycle engine. Yeah. And it's... Easily my favorite video of his God, ever. That is deep um, so if you have time, I highly recommend going and watching that because it's an insane vehicle. And this one was in not particularly great shape. Not that any of them are, I'm sure. But God, I actually all, all saw of these one are in pretty Ohio, compelling videos. Wild. The yeah. Wildfire, the VPG MV1, God, which he has two model years listed. Sure. The Daewoo Lanos. Oh, he, it doesn't even start. He attempts to start it. Right. That's yeah. a dream <laughs> video. Back when the early days of YouTube, you could get away with that kind of content and it was great. And now you got to have a Veyron ever... crushing a F40 to yeah. get views. Right. 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 But hey, so I'm Kyle Ford with a sub. Is. I also remember, I remember reading about, he was in, I think it was Motor Trend. Like they did an article on him. And I remember that was a really big deal. Yeah, yeah. That, that, like this a YouTuber. This guy I watch on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, who I'm saying this to, but this guy I watch on YouTube is in Motor right. Trend. I was like, oh my gosh. Right. I still have it somewhere um, in my magazine collection. But huge shout out to Slav Kyle Ford. Let's huge. talk about his truck really quick. Yeah. Yeah. So he's selling this Six truck with Crate us. V8 in an S10. Damn. It's a Crate V8. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at that engine. Doug, you don't know anything about what that means, but it doesn't mean that it's in a crate right now. <laughs> You're out of your mind. I know everything about everything. <laughs> I know everything about everything. Classic Doug comeback. Uh, you know nothing is what he usually it, it's, says. I mean, like, it's incredible, first of all, that, that a six liter V8 fits in the engine bay of an No, S10. these you should see the engine bay of these trucks. I just yeah, did a Bravada, which is the SUV version. And you should see how much space there is everywhere. It's all just right angles. Yeah, I mean, and I look at lines. that and like, I'm like, man, that thing looks easy to work Can on. Can I take but. us on a quick detour to talk about the fact that this was originally the S10 Tahoe? Because Tahoe, before being a model, was just a trim level on the this. Yeah. And maybe the Bla- K5 Blazer Tahoe, right? Yeah. I mean, Sierra Class, there were, a lot of things were just trim levels, and, and they, they had those names, and they were yeah. like, let's just do it. I mean, there was, wasn't, there was, at one point, there was an F50, F-150 that was the F-150, like, Explorer Ranger. Right, right. All in one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they, they already owned those. The, so yeah. this is a 6-0-liter Crate V8, cool 460 build. horsepower. Kenan, what would you do with this truck burnouts, if you were to get it? I mean, uh, yeah, that's what you do, a burnouts, and right? Yeah, Burnouts, maybe. I mean, that's kind of it, I think. No, oh, it's automatic. Right. Right. Well, that makes it harder. Well, no, no, not to a burnout. Not to a burnout. Kyle could do a burnout in two seconds in this thing. Any reasonable human could. (laughs) It's got 460 horsepower (laughs) and no weight in the back. Literally, zero. You could just burn out everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, You might might have no choice. Ooh, some subs. Some subs. Some subs because he's going back to his OG days, like when he put him in that Mazda. This is generally a really cool build. This is a great build. How did he get the deck lid to match the plastic and the color? Really nicely done. That's like. There's no way GMC installed. sold it like that, right? With any sort of thing there. It must have had seats back there, right? Like horrid... Maybe? I don't know. Inward-facing seats really, that no yeah. one would ever ride yeah, in. I assume so. This is such a, the red is, is great. It looks really nicely. 
done all around. And it's been owned by a legend. It's been owned, owned by, by a legend. legend. That's right. Um, can you go That's back cool. to the listing itself? I want to see what we Yeah, do. of course. All right, 638. So it's no we'll reserve drive. also. Um, Excessive. Can you go scroll down to the mods? What else it's we no got? reserve because Sab Oh my gosh, up. look at that list of modifications. He's got it. Can it honestly, our list, our cars would, would look like that too <laughs> if we had the space he had. I don't think so. Look at uh, that. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. We wouldn't mod him because we're not mod guys, but we would replace stuff. Look Big front brake kit. That a different is a S- Wait, sorry, scroll up a second. A different S10, a 1993 S10 front end conversion. Okay. Keep, wait, keep going down. Keep going. Jeez. The Oldsmobile Bravada leather door card inserts. Ooh, a nice. Typhoon steering wheel. He found a Bravada one day in the uh, junk yard. Yeah. It's got a Typhoon <laughs> steering wheel, but it had a Chevy steering wheel right. center cap. Um, um, that is a list of modifications. Uh, I, I legitimately think this both have been incredibly cool build and a really nicely done one where he made great choices. And t- t- I love when the list place. is so long that the factory equipment list is only two points. Right, because that's the only thing that I haven't changed. <laughs> that's that's air conditioning and an adjustable steering column. And you know what? Even if he hadn't made any modifications, those would have been the only pieces of equipment that came <laughs> from the factory also. <laughs> Four-wheel drive. Wow, it's probably how cool. Hundred. Also, it just looks great. Yeah, it looks cool. This thing plays in the South. God, I miss living in the South where you could have a truck like this and really show up to a car event and people would be all excited. Um, should we do a couple of questions and then talk about the DBS for a minute? Yeah, let's do a couple of questions and then talk about the DBS for a minute. we got to go back to the S10. Um, okay. Zach writes, oh my God, here's a great one. Kenan, this is the, we're going to spend the rest of the afternoon on this or more. I don't know what time it is. Oh. Zach writes, why does Doug never talk about the Renault Espas F1? All right, Filippo, go ahead, get started. Well, the reason that Doug doesn't talk about it is that he is not a legitimate adult. <laughs> it does not take over his thoughts as it should. And it's a real shortcoming of it. This is one of the great vehicles so of all cool. time. Let's discuss this. Okay, go to Kenan's screen. Kenan's got a picture of this thing up. It's wild. <laughs> At some point so in the cool. 90s, <laughs> Renault decided to take a Formula One engine and put yeah. it in their minivan. Not unlike when Porsche took a Formula One engine and put it in my career GT. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- there Back are some, that, huh? some differences, primarily in that their F1 engine, I think, was actually used. Well, yeah, it was it used in the Espas F1. It in an actual Formula One <laughs> right. car, but we'll move on. That is this is an actual F1 engine. Yeah. For those who don't know, the Renault Espas or Space was their minivan no. that was like the Dodge it's Grand Caravan. A space? A space? It's a Espas. Here's an, here's an interesting piece of trivia for you. Diverting for a second. When Ford went to sell the Escape in Europe, they decided that Escape looked too similar to called Espas. The and so they called it the... Cougar. Initially, they called it the Maverick. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. And now you know. I did not know that. That's um, this is the coolest thing in the world. Why don't I, t- why don't I talk about it more? Right. If I could buy it, I would. I would be, be interested in having two Formula One engine cars. <laughs> <laughs> one with more pedigree than the more other. More racing. Seat. More pedigree? Do you think the Courier GT has more pedigree? No, than no, 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 no. Sorry. I don't I know, c- I should have been clear. <laughs> I don't think the Courier GT has more pedigree. <laughs> Look at the, what, it, what were they <laughs> thinking? <laughs> what, what went through their minds on this? To be fair... What went through their minds during this period in general? God, yeah, look at the cars behind. Look at that one. Right. Well, that's just a regular. Now, class. on the subject what, what of do you this. Mean? That just, <laughs> it's a regular one, but like what okay. a period we were in. Right. Two-tone and a lot of glass and, Two, and no yep. headrests. You were what, getting whiplash. What year was this? Like 96, I think. Can you look at it's, uh, Renault's lineup in 1996? 94, it says. 1994. Wait, wait. Before you do that ridiculous thing that we're getting off at a tangent oh. on mid 90s French cars, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's also talk about. Let's also talk. <laughs> about, oops, my bad. <laughs> let's also talk about the BMW X5, Kenan. Go ahead. Oh yes, of course. Oh yes, you found a development picture of the. the no, well, we could talk car. about that, but no, the X. The, we're looking oh, at the F1 Espace, and he's going to develop. I knew. What no, was the going. X5, where they put a Le Mans engine in it. Oh, the X5 LM. Yes. <laughs> I'm very familiar with this car. It, it <laughs> Apparently hell, not. The thing that blows me away, you, you don't know about <laughs> No, no, no. Clearly, I know. Doug knows. We're looking at an F1 engine in a spa. So I said, Kenan, tell us about the X5. And you're well, like, I didn't know what X5 you were referring to. Just the, the one X5 with the Ford race car engine in it. <laughs> yes. The X5. Can L- you look it up, please? <laughs> yeah, of course. For the viewers at home. <laughs> the X5. <laughs> just, why do we decide that Kenan should I? <laughs> why does he have the computer? <laughs> All right, Kenan, tell us about it. Go to the BMW. No, no, go, go to that's the... That's not even it. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Oh, no, that's not it. Yes, the, it is. The one that was it. No, it's, that, it's the one with the BBSs. Bit. Yeah, well, that is the same car, by No, the way. it's not the same car. Yeah. So BMW Classic did a wonderful video on this. If you haven't watched it, go 
and watch it. But the X5 LM used the V12 <laughs> that was used in the McLaren F1. It was also used in the BMW V12 LMR, which Wait is a more sec. specifically this, this car. This car used the V12 from the McLaren F1? Yes. Like the, the racing S70 engine. Dash. That was the engine in it? That's exactly right. Now, it was also... BMW took that engine racing with the V12 LMR. That's technically the Which engine. Which was a LM prototype car. car. Yeah, that's the engine that's in this car. Now, why they decided to build this car, it was pure fun, as far as I can tell. Which is crazy, because when, when did the Germans have fun? During this era, BMW would let their engineers have fun occasionally, because don't forget the other cars. That the E46 M3 GTR had a V8. Like, I mean, they were letting them do like crazy cool stuff at the time, and the concept cars at the time were wild. The E46 M3 Touring, E39 M5 Touring, and all those sorts. <laughs> okay, the I know those concepts are <laughs> those, 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 those ones are crazy, but, is, but they, they never even built they, them. They sorry, never sorry, even sorry, like sorry, pursued no, 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 no. them. But I, also gotta, the gotta, 850 CSI, the yeah, M8 yeah. that came before Wait, this. Wait, you know what? Another great one was another E34 car. Cabriolet. Yeah, that was so. Oh, I'm sorry. On the tail end of that era, yeah. For um, the thirty four is a five series. No, no, I'm familiar with the <laughs> thirty four. The cabriolet part that I was not aware of. Yeah, there it is. Wow, <laughs> it's purple. Like what? Why? How? But well, they, they had to make a two door body to do this. Right. This comes. Why? The, the Why X5 did they LM do this? comes on the tail end of that era where they're letting their engineers just play around. You know what was going fun. on? The M3 pickup truck. Mercedes Benz was making an E class cabrio, right. and BMW it made sense, to be honest. was like, not we got to get into that then. market, and then Mercedes and then they stopped. Right, and then BMW eventually came out with the 6 Series. How are um, we doing on the F10? And that did not go well. No, the six but series. back to the X5 LM. So I can no, no, how are we doing on the S10? Because I believe we're at the end. Right. No, you still got two minutes okay, left. Okay, okay, sorry, I keep yeah. talking about Thank that. you for the interruption, Flavio. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> the crazy thing to me about this car was it was driven around the Nürburgring. And as a matter of fact, there it is, I believe. Um it held the record for an SUV for a very long time. What beat well, yeah, it has car. a. I don't remember I mean, what beat it. I would imagine it was surprise. the Turbo, but <laughs> but it was like that's how wild things were because the SUV was a new yeah, kind of cool, idea, yeah. especially for the Germans. I'm picturing a, a and so they wanted XJ to Cherokee. I suspect to it. it was done mostly for marketing to show that like it's yes, it's an SUV, but we can make a driver's version. Now, granted, this is pretty extreme. It's actually, an, an SAV, but. Whatever, Felipe. But the, the point is, like, they're trying to establish this type of car. Yeah. Uh, and this was the coolest way to do it without question. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now what the fastest SUVs around the Nürburgring are. I'm not more bought into the SAV branding that the BMW used. I'm going to tell you right now what the fastest SUVs around the Nürburgring are. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Right. Number one, fastest. Brand new Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. Not surprised. Number two, fastest. BMW X5 LM. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Wow. Wow. So it's, it's tied with the some version of the Audi RSQ, the Audi RSQ8. It's tied with the Audi RSQ8 for second. Right, I, they so, don't so let me repeat this back. Two production vehicles that you could go buy right now. Right. And a one-off car. Yeah, but I could build an SUV that went faster. <laughs> <laughs> In a long weekend. <laughs> oh, I would um, start with this truck, potentially. Yeah, no, you would start with the truck. It wouldn't go well. Let me tell you something. BMW put real engineering. BMW did it in 742. Wow. I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's nuts. That is wild. Career GT was 729. It only beat wow. it by <laughs> <laughs> two race car engines. Yep. Two, two, uh, two extra cylinders. On going at it. Five, you know? Right. Right. Um, you want to talk Aston Martin DBS? I do. Okay. Can Pull up the Aston Martin DBS. As we watch, as we watch that was on my list, Saab really. Kyle bring in the bids. But it's the next car, I think. It's yeah. literally the next car, yeah. Aston Martin DBS. You have anything to say about it? You want to very little. It? I mean, the twin turbo V twelve, which is incredibly cool. It's a yeah. gorgeous car. Seven hundred and fifteen cool. horsepower. This right. car is like the Hellcat of the Aston Martin world. It really seven hundred and fifteen. It has horsepower. more horsepower, in fact, than a Hellcat. Normal no version by eight. Correct. <laughs> 715 horsepower. When did we get to a point where it was okay for car companies to put 700 horsepower in their cars? Great 600 was a big it, jump. And then is this it was 5.2 liter V12 shared with anything? Like, well, what's it from? All, all, all of Aston Martin's V8s obviously are shared with AMG now. Well, probably it's in the DBX. Is it's there, a sport utility is vehicle. There a DBX V12? <laughs> <laughs> is there a DBX V12? I don't think so. <laughs> well, there's a DBX called the 707, which I, know, I assume I refers to the horsepower rating. You think they have a 750 horsepower V12 and a 707? I believe it also has a V8. Otherwise, you know, yeah, I mean, there's only dog. one hang SUV on, coming out. Hang, hang, hang on a what's second. Hang on a second. What's your point here? Yeah, it's Can you not scroll down the highlights? You're right. What about the Rapide? What about the Lagonda? 
Tara. <laughs> 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 um, this is just such a gorgeous. Yeah. It's truly a gorgeous car. 715 horsepower, 664 pound feet of torque. It's legit. Carbon ceramic brakes, carbon fiber roof. Yeah, a no, this is a legit. Chopped carbon this is a very, trim. very, very serious car. Aston Martin DBS is no joke. It's also absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, the DB11 looks nice, and the DBS looks like they really this took it on to the next very level. Much it's insane. Pretty car. Pull up Kenan's screen here. We got we got giant wheels. We got we got uh, side gills. Mm -hmm. It's a very good looking. Also, car. This, now the, pre the previous DBS I think is truly one of the. Best you don't think this looks better made. than that? No, I Problem don't think is so. Kenan, Kenan is huge getting to a point. Though. Where his automotive knowledge is kind of stopping right. in 2015. And I'm nervous about getting that. Getting to a point? I mean, he's getting to that. Because there's still some. No, like, there are cars that he's like, cars I care about. Us, but way. I'm nervous about this. Because this is a better looking car also, than your, the I mean, DBS. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think this is brand new. It has some miles. But it's on. I think it's 5,000 miles. Yep, 5,300 okay, 5, miles. miles. Um, so someone drove it like a car, yeah. actually, for a year. <laughs> that's not bad. And it's so pretty. Meanwhile, wow, I saw Kyle fun. still picking up the... Bids. Okay, you want to talk Lotus Elise? I do. We Can we talk Lotus Elise? Two Elises. Elises. Like, we have two we, we, Lotus we had Elises one Elise that's that sold one. today. Yes. We have two yes. more. S1. S1. One. S one. That's legit. Not sold in the US. The There's color one. is? Norfolk mustard. Norfolk mustard. Kenner? Deep uh, British. Deep British indeed. You know, I had an 05 Elise in S2, and, and um, I thought the interior was pretty Spartan. <laughs> and then I edited <laughs> this one. Go to the interior. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> well, somehow. there are um, fog lights. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much occurring inside this car. No. No. Have you driven on this one? No. Man, that looks, like, that looks like it was just made by a, a guy. The, uh, Elise looks like it was just carved in <laughs> totally that day. It looks like it was just no, a No stent by a person. Just, it certainly wasn't done by a machine. And the lo lo Lotus Gage. They're so bad. cool, though. Also, I love oh, the people are importing them. are very cool. It's S1 releases it are so cool. It's a rover engine. Go to the engine. Go to the engine. Go to the engine. No, not show it. <laughs> show the details. Ooh, Elise is written on the the. He's um, not gonna. He's not gonna go back to the details. No, he's, he's not gonna go back to the highlights. Despite, despite the fact that, that that's what's all we want to see. <laughs> Thank you, Kenan. One point eight liter. Wasn't a one point eight liter rover K series engine? Yeah, rover four cylinder. One hundred eighteen horsepower and one hundred twenty. It only had one hundred eighteen horsepower, but it weighed horsepower? even less than the S two have. The, the one I had was one ninety. Mm. Um, yeah, it's so at cool. That. Look at look at the back. I mean, right. And this car is a U.S. title. It's in the U.S. Where is it? Uh, this car is located in Colorado, Colorado. in Denver. Tennessee. Why don't you um, buy me? It? Yeah. Oh, that would be a good Kenan car. Well, it has a reserve, so I'm not allowed to bid on it. Um, this is the kind of thing you should get. You're, you're like little. You could get into this. You can yeah. get rid of that Fiat. I love my Fiat. Ugh. Not actually. I would consider it. So it would be cool. It, it is. I, I've always loved the S1, at least. I think they're incredibly cool. It's great that you can bring them over now, too. Yeah. So yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't well, seen one at Cars and Coffee years. or anything like no, that. No, I truly really have seen one in person aside from the Europe. I don't see many Do we US show how many they built? Like, it can't be that. Many. It was a long period, but I don't know that I've seen one aside from in Europe. They are very, very uncommon. Never officially sold in the United States. Colin yep. Chapman. Go to the other release. We have another yeah, release have another on the site right now that is incredible. This car is a 2005 Elite with only yeah. 1,900 miles. It's got to be wow. the nicest one left. Jeez. Look at that. Because people bought these to drive. There were very few people who bought these to like keep. In fact, I see more of them with extremely yeah. high miles. And people do have real miles on them. Than with like relatively low miles. <clears throat> um. Man, it's this is such car. a cool car. And we sold one today with 49,000 right. miles. What's the that one before that we sold had 41,000. The one before that had 45. Yeah, you by Did you? Ooh, I forgot about that. We sold an Elise with 90,000 miles on it. Also, My old 06 has like 120,000 miles. That's a lot of miles on an Elise. That's oh, yeah. I, I drove one across the country. Elise. Trust me. Um, I know. It's a I lot do of miles. I love, love the Elise. The, the last Elise that we had close today, by the way, was reviewed on the Cars and Bits channel by our the very own Atlantis King. gear selector, you'd put your hand on it and it would burn you. That's a value add. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they, oh, look at those pedals. Yeah, look at those pedals. I, I mean, mean, like, you know, a car is serious when the <laughs> the center brace has holes drilled out of it to make for, it lighter. For lightness, I yeah. mean, that's yeah. It you didn't know, need all that. No, there's no extra fluff here. It didn't need all that stuff. Okay, Kenneth, please pull up the questions a again. Heard, like the the just incredible. The the um the uh, Saab Kyle truck is continuing to go go go, and so we will we'll we will ask another question, Kenan. Yeah. Um. Find a question that you like and ask him. Okay. 
Yeah, let's see. Come on, give us something good. Kenan, uh, find a question. What's a car? Oh, here's I know the answer to this one. What's a car that Doug loves that everyone or that everyone, everyone else loves, loves and Doug but hates? I, hate, I what know do you one. S- you're gonna say Maserati Gran Turismo. You think well, it's one I of the think ugliest <laughs> cars, which is not the what Maserati that car is. Gran Gran Turismo. I don't know that people love it. The Maserati Gran the Turismo. It's looks. not the Maserati but, Gran Turismo is the ugliest car ever made, but it's it's not a car no, that everyone that, loves. It's a car that some people like. What is a car that everyone loves but I hate? It's a good question. You're not as Let contrarian me think about as it. we think. No, he's the contrarian yeah. one. I'm sure you have a thousand. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm positive, you know. Is that my screen? Yes. Um, wait, here's Anish writing. Why did you tell the RS2 Avant? Because it was over. It was time. I had to move on. Um, there's a question <laughs> there that... Uh, wait, don't, don't move. Oh, my God. You, I lost my <laughs> RS2. <laughs> Um, what is a car widely hated that you community that you'd actually drive and enjoy? Isn't that, that the same that person, question? No, different question. That person's would be the Vogue convertible. What is, is a car widely I, hated by the community I that you would drive and enjoy? I strongly believe that Doug should have an Vogue convertible and would enjoy it even though he'll never admit it. Um, I don't want, I don't like that engine. So what? Swap it in. <laughs> go, to, go to North Carolina. Hang it's out with Kyle to put me a to put me a V8 in it. Yep. Um, that that S10, by the way, ended at twenty three thousand seven hundred fifty. Twenty three seven fifty, which is feels like a good amoint of money for a create engine. There are no comps for that <laughs> car. No wait, what is the question that we're answering here? Go back to it. Okay, mm. where was it? What is the what, it what was is the it? what is a car widely hated by the community that you would drive and enjoy? Isaiah says this. Mine is the Evoke convertible. No, Widely yeah. hated by what, the convertible. What do you think it is for you? It would have to be something that would be affordable. And what do you think it is for you? I have to think about this. I mean, I had an A class. You hate the it. Multipla probably is the answer. Oh, the Multipla I would oh, kill multiple. for. Oh, I think you don't have to kill you. For like 10 grand, you can have one. <laughs> you I don't have to tempting. kill anybody. I think for me, Lagonda. Everybody just has that. On every list the of original the original one? Car, yeah. On yeah. the list, the, the, yes, not the original, but the Series 2 through Series 4. Um, everybody on the list of the ugliest cars ever made, it always makes it, um, and as does the Multipla. Uh, yep. But I've always I thought the that looks so much. it looks so cool. That ant eater looking car with that, especially the Series Two that had the single post steering wheel. Right, that's the one. I agree with you, although I don't think that's as widely hated as you think. Here's a good one, Mondial. We've decided we oh, like the Mondial. Mondial. We had this yellow Mondial hated. in the office. Oh, you guys said you liked it. I drove it. It was great. Even he hated it. He said he hated it. Well, he's an idiot. He's never, he doesn't know anything about sports. Also, my, my interaction <laughs> with it was limited to driving it onto a transporter. I drove that car around for the video. Great. I loved it. I was like obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is a Buzzy. gated Enzo era manual V8 Wedge. dog leg like an F40. Um, right. Saab 900. The NG Saab 900. Everyone likes that car. Fine. Everyone likes that car. <laughs> I'm trying no to one. think of what people don't like. Uh, okay, actually, I'll give no, you some. No, one, I've got Panda, one more for that list. I'll give you some Everybody that I think. Here, I pulled up a list of hated cars. I'll give you some that I think you would like. Right, okay. <clears throat> Jeep Compass. Mm. <laughs> Not a good oh. start. Dodge Caliber. Not a good start, but I think it is less bad than people make it out to be. Saturn Ion. <laughs> no. You know, I see a lot of calipers, which suggest to me they're not as unreliable as you yeah, think. Th- th- I mean, it's the same 2.4 liter in line. But it has a CVT that was supposedly trash, but they're kind of around. Sang Yong Rodius. That's the answer oh to this question. God. Pull up a Sang Yong Rodius. Let's talk about it for the rest of the year. Kenan will not be able to spell no. it, nor has he ever heard of this car. I do, but I do have, I do have one car do, that wait, makes sorry, that list. Sorry, that, sorry. No. Do you know what it looks like? No. Oh, pull up the Sang Yong Rodius and we'll talk about <laughs> yours, maybe. Oh, wow. He's going to do it. <laughs> what is your car, Kenan? Uh, G80 M3. That oh, is a yep. very hated car. And I that we love would it. love. Absolutely. Yeah. A buddy of mine just bought a stick one in green. That is just a car. No, Kenan! <laughs> Look at the design! Pull up this. Pull up yeah, Kenan's screen. Great. He doesn't know how to click, but pull up Kenan's screen. The G80 M3? G80 M3. Yeah. G80 M3 is a great M3. one. What's on that list? Yep. Oh, of hated cars? Yep. Um, I love the I love you said the Saturn Ion, but I love the Saturn View Red Line or Green Line. There, it was never called the Green Line. I know, line. but it was. That's what it was. <laughs> what was it called? The hybrid. Was it, was it not a? They were gonna call it the Green Line up until like six days before it came out, and then they were like, "No, we're just gonna call it the Red Line." Um, they've just they've they're dead over there. They're just gonna stay on the Elise. They just yep. want to see yep. the Well, here we go. Sub Kyle for sold twenty three seven fifty. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but but wait, there are a few other cards that are live that I want to talk about. We talked about the Elise. Kenan had yes. a video, reviewed this. The video went live today, so go check it out on the Cars and You channel. drove this STO? I did. What did you think of that? It's an exceptionally cool car, and it is like, it, the thing I liked the most was that, it, you know, it's a brand new car, so there are a couple things that I really appreciated. One is this is the last ultra-high-performance 
naturally aspirated only non-hybrid Lamborghini that will ever exist. The Strato exists, and that will be the last non-hybrid Lamborghini, period. But this is the last time they made one that's really focused for the road. And But the other thing I... So it was very special in that regard. But the other thing I really loved about it was that when I got out of that car, it's such an involving experience. It's so loud yeah. and raw and just alive. Yeah. And I got out of that, and it was like getting out of the Countach. And that, like, I was like, I'm done. And that's the kind, that's why it's the perfect like fifth or sixth car. You would never want this as like a second sports car. Like it's, but it still delivers that old school Lamborghini experience. And I guess if you're at the point where you need that, like you have a lot of cars, um, but it was unique and really special, and I enjoyed it a whole lot. You drove one. I loved it. Doug the Mirror Channel. Mm. Incredible. Similar experience. I think the Countach is way more insane. You got to spend more time. No, the Countach is way more insane, but I'm saying it's still, as a driver too, it still felt like, the Countach is way more insane in a lot of regards, but it it was in that same category, that same vein. That's what it delivered to me. It's a special car. And also like, it drives well, it's fast, it's loud. It's like, it, the, I already I love the regular Huracan, but it's like the next level. It's of the next level, sure. even over the Performante. Well, yeah, way over the Performante. Man, to me, it, it, the the two hur- the three Huracans to buy are the Storado because it's cool, the coolest one. Yep. STO is definitely the best driver, and then an early regular one is like starting to get kind of reasonably priced. Yeah, the, and I would skip the Performantes and the other ones. And because my understanding is they're pretty robust. I mean, a lot of rental car companies have these yeah. things. Exotic car rental companies. A lot they of put YouTubers miles have on them, and they get you know, beat price. and they take it. Um, but I think that. I also, like, I just, I was blown away. This, this car also, from an engineering perspective, like, they put real effort into this car. Yeah. Uh, it's not just like a Lamborghini where they just slapped some carbon fiber on and went, look at me, and that was yeah. it. They really, tr- the brakes are very serious. Um, the weight reduction is very serious. That um, Confango or whatever front hood is, like, it's, that's a very, um, yeah. no, it's it an amazing piece No, it definitely has a more ex- exciting, uh, like, more e- more visceral driving experience than a regular. Oh, it, it all results, yeah. And I mean, than a regular Con con, yeah. Then a regular con. This is this is a hurricane, and some others are hurricanes. But this right. one, oh wow, where is this one located? As you like to say, this, uh, this, this one's in Los Angeles. Yeah, yep. but um, amazing car and way, a beautiful spec. I too. love the spec. I, most STO specs oh, yeah. are a little Blue too functions. out there for me. Oh man, Often just to see one with so so wheels. horrible STO specs. But one this is sold great. on a different site. Yeah, oh, this one's the, so the, it's a great color. It's subtle. I actually really like the wheels. Yeah, silver looks um, great on the wheel. The gold Obviously wheels also love. look good, but I totally agree. This is a nice looking STO. And like, there are some it just heinous, there are some heinous STOs. There are some STOs that are so heinous it's like hard to even really think about it. <laughs> not have <laughs> not have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but this is truly gorgeous. But this one looks great. Looks insane without Yeah. Th- they made so many changes to it to for performance that look insane. Ooh, it, it doesn't need a it's crazy like color to, to Can do we it. go back no. to the questions briefly? <clears throat> yes. There's one other car we gotta talk about, just you know. Well, we'll see. We'll finish that. It's Kenan's dream. I know that's true. Kenan, give us some questions. All right, let's see. Can Kenan tell us what the audience wants to know? Casey asks, "Are there any pre 2010s automatic sports cars you'd consider buying?" That is a great question. Are there any pre automatic sports cars you consider buying? Because that's like pre dual clutch. Yeah, 430 tip, uh, 612 yeah. tip, uh, 360 challenge Stradale. Mm. 360 CS tip. I call I call all automatics. Mark tips IV out. Supra. <laughs> Mark IV Supra. Mark IV Supra. Would, would, I, would pursue that for, <clears throat> according to him. Um, our 35 GTR came out in 09. Yeah, but his point is like pre dual clutch, which well, which is a great point. A great question. Casey. That is a yeah. great question. I mean, uh, there, there are, I have to, and, and maybe this is going out limb, but I think you feel the same way too. There is something about those early single plate clutches. I mean, they just. They slam into gear. I'm it's into the really early single plate clutches a little bit more, but that era yeah. was short before the dual clutches started coming out. It and honestly, short. a lot of the cars in that single clutch era were kind of trash. Would you consider owning yeah, a Veyron? Yeah, they were, they a were what? A lot of Veyron? Well, Veyron's a dual clutch. He's asking pre Veyron. He's at, what he's the. I'm going to rephrase the Casey's question. Of the question. Casey's is, question says, "Are there any pre dual clutch automatic?" Some of us car? take questions as asked. No, I'm telling you what he means. <laughs> <laughs> Casey, that's not. And what it's you a mean. great you question. It is a great question, and. You know, aside from those, I can't think of any others. The Vector W8. Mm. Nicely done. <laughs> the, <laughs> there Nicely are done. some, like, like not quite sports cars, but Audi S6 with a V10. No, he's specifically asking about sports cars. An we RS6, know there are sedans. A, a, an RS6. It's a we sports know car. there it's are a sports sed- sedan. 
<laughs> it's a car. It's a sedan. There you go. I'm not going to get into the discussion of what is a sports car on this pro- on this program. I want to answer the but question two fully, doors okay, is welcome. an essential component. <laughs> oh, intriguing. That's not. I don't <laughs> no, think that's, that's up for debate. <laughs> anybody would debate that. The entire I have, I have a very figure. tight definition of sports car, but I think everyone agrees it cannot have multiple more than two doors. Yeah, I could it be absolutely a hatchback. Agree. Third door. It cannot be a hatchback either. Although, if you can think of a rear-wheel drive, <laughs> I mean, an Espada, I would consider to be a sports car, and it had a hatchback. So, yes. Victory is mine. All right. <laughs> if you're doing a Spada, yes. Um, Alexander writes, is the Peugeot 406 Coupe an attractive car for you guys? Yes. Yes. This is one of the most beautiful, affordable cars ever made. Kenan, pull up two things for me. Pull up a 406 Coupe so Filippo can relive his childhood. I, I, okay. It's a gorgeous car. What's the other thing? We'll, yeah, pull, pull we'll, we'll start with that. <laughs> okay. We'll start there. <laughs> we need to let Filippo relive his childhood before we push him. Oh, he's <laughs> got to look it up. He doesn't know what it is. <laughs> no, I think I remember what this is. <laughs> this is no, so it's not what I thought it was. Go to images. Go to it, images. We won the first yet, not the... the oh, the God. This is such a beautiful it car. It is truly is a gorgeous car. Probably a horrible car. He probably goes to the worst image of one in the worst color, <laughs> but that's fine. It still looks good. Yeah, it's I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need no, the red I don't like it, to be honest. It's fine. All right, can you pick all right. <laughs> go to go to go to the worst lines. car? Like pick, right, Look there. at the beautiful, simple, clean lines of this car. If that it wasn't was on clean. 13s and if it wasn't on French <laughs> plates, that would be a really attractive car. It, this is not the best angle. For no. Honest. no, there were there were bigger wheels that looked there better. There were. But we won't find them. But now, Kenan, I'm gonna blow your mind. You've seen this car. Yep. Go now, type in Peugeot 406 coupe for, and then type in Ferrari 360. Just, oh, just add like, Ferrari 360 to your search string. Your, your mind is going to be blown. Have you seen this? No. You can do perfect 360 oh replicas. God. This is what they use. I've seen these. This is what they use to do them? <laughs> no way. Incredible. Click on that one. Well, that looks like legit. Really oh, my God. Good. That's so good. <laughs> it's a little off. I like, guess it's, a little, it's definitely a little but off. That's... But it's less off than 99% of replicas you will ever see. And it's just... <laughs> I designed the for What? <laughs> It was a Pininfarina car. Maybe, maybe they knew. Maybe right, they, they, they knew that. They started the process. Is that one? That's a 406 yeah. underneath? <laughs> you can see the wheel offset is a little off, but tell me otherwise that that does not look like a wild. 360. That's wild. Wild. Yeah. Oh, here's a, yeah, there it is going together. Wow. I guess someone figured out the wheel base is the same. <laughs> it's just like, let's go at it. It's got the wheel. And the general proportions are the same, and it works out. I love this. On well, that stuff. yeah, all right, that blew my mind. I wow. have to say, thank you. Douglas. That red thank one, is, that, that red one with the British plates there, that yeah. one is wild. I mean, if yeah. I saw that, I would think it was nothing other than a 360. You would yep. never know. Yeah. Yep. Even though it's a front-engine car, right. that's the other important thing here. Peter Farina knows what they're doing. The, the 406 coupe was front-engine, and yet you can still make it look like this. It's pretty crazy. Incredible. Well, now we 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 got a plan for content. Is that you want us to do this? Yeah. Can you imagine? Um, okay. Are there other questions that we should do? Uh, Cameron, best used EV for the money right now. Filippo, take this one. You know it all. All right. The, the, there are two ones that really come to mind. Early Model S's are 13 to yeah. 15 grand, and they might be eligible for a used EV tax credit. Pull up. What are we selling early Model S's for? 15. Not joking. And legitimately, there was an... Uh, the Autopian had, had an article. lowest price. The Autopian had an article about this, and um, <laughs> which I think used that white one, and they point out that that would be eligible for a $4,000 tax credit. <laughs> so really, you're getting the purchase price down to fourteen five. Wow. Um, so that's one. Model 3s, cheap. Incredibly yeah, cheap. Wild. Uh, hell, you may as well buy new, to be fair. Those have gotten cheap, too. That's Go to, Cook on lowest price for Model 3s. I don't agree with that, because they're so cheap. 20. 20 grand. What is our cheapest performance? Uh, 25. Uh, yeah. How yeah. much horsepower does that car have? Is it 500? Click on that performance down there. 25K for, for Model 3 performances, but yeah. not that many. 450 50. horsepower Jeez. for 25. Right. Right. And they're not getting more expensive. Let's put it that right. way. Other options, uh, Chevy Bolt, you can get for, for pretty cheap. But now we're on to Filippo stuff. Yeah. Yep. And I love the Chevy Bolt. Um, annoyingly, Fiat 500 E is not as cheap as you think they should be. And same is actually true of Leafs and other uh, ones. So Rivians Ma- are getting the answer. He also asked about Rivian specifically, and they're getting oh, yeah. more affordable. There, R1T. We, go we back get into the sub sixty k. We sold a sub sixty k R1T. Now it had real miles. Yeah, it had like twenty five thousand miles, but it gives you an, an idea of where the market is going. That one sold for fifty nine one eighty five like a week or two ago. At forty two thousand miles. Yeah. Wow, pretty. He impressive. drove it, but like that but gives yeah, you an idea. You're cheap. seeing where this market is headed. Yep. R1S are also at eighty now. R1S are at eighty, which it seems like a lot, but. Compared, what is a new one? 100? 
Yeah, if you were to buy a new, it, it, they've gone to the 90s and 100s. And so they're getting down into the 70s. When that car gets into the 60s, it's going to be like hard to hard to argue. You're going to have to get rid of the M5. Well, that will never happen. You can pry those keys from my dead cold fingers, but <laughs> that is quite a deal. You just trade the M5 for a three-row no. uh, electric uh, sport utility vehicle. That has nope. more than twice the horsepower. <laughs> Kenan, it's, it's pick a question. It's not about that, the outright power. Kenan, pick a question that you want to answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, bu- 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 let's see. <laughs> You've got to be a core V6 coupe question. Is that what you're looking at? I, I wasn't looking at that one, but you I You want to take that one, Felipe? No, 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 Kennedy. No, no, no. Take a question that you want to answer. Be- Carl asks, best Acura of all time and best Acura on sale now. Kenan, I think you can handle this one. Nope, Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, NSX is the, the best Acura of all time. Yeah, the original. The original. Uh, or variant thereof. Um, I think that the MDX uh, Type S, which I th- or whatever they call the sportier trim, is a great car. The, they, they no longer sell new NSXs, right? That's yeah. off, off market. MDX. Okay. Kenan, have you found a question? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, Manit asks, uh, for the same money, uh, used F80 M3 or new G20 mm, M340i. That's a good I, uh, I, would, I, I personally would get the M3 for a variety of reasons. One, I want a true M car, and that's what it is, to be honest with you. M, if, if M I'm going to be both. a, a name both. Yeah, one's an actual M car, please. <laughs> one is a WBS VIN. And that's the one I want. I, bl- I, bl- I don't think the G20 does. But I think that is hey a, man, it's a great question. The XM is uh, an actual M car. For me, <laughs> for me always, though, I, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I just can't suffer depreciation personally. Like, I, I would rather pay maintenance than suffer depreciation, which is and boy, evident in all the cars. And on the F80 M3, you'll be doing both. So, actually, it's a great situation. The, F- the F80 M3 has come down a lot. But they, there you go. What uh, did we sell down a we, we sold them today for 30 Really? I think. Is that true? Yeah. yeah, thirty man. I mean, look at wait. Now go go sort by lowest price. Is that true? That's a one hundred car. Go, yeah. go, go sort by lowest price. That's that is the lowest but price. still thirty, thirty one, thirty two. How many miles on this? Eighty five, eighty five, nine, eighty six. Uh, wow, and it doesn't have 30. any accidents. Some, so some dining mods. This yeah. is a this, this is, is a, a great car, car for thirty. I didn't realize they were thirty. I thought there were still forty four. I don't know why. <laughs> But man, that's yeah, a gr- that. it's a great. I also happen to think that the F80 M3 is one of the best looking yeah, BMWs. I, I, I from the modern era. I think that is it does a look phenomenal. Good. A sedan with yes, a manual a, is a is a great very nice car. looking well, car. The, what, what's the cheapest manual that we sold? Um, let's see. A sedan with a manual. Kenan doesn't know this, but you can on our results page filter by transmission type. Yep, but here it is. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, Felipe. That really <laughs> saved me a lot of time there. Uh, but yeah, this one this one <laughs> sold. <laughs> <laughs> for thirty five five, uh, this one sold in um, July of twenty two. Um, but but still. nonetheless, there's that. There's Where's that, that Atlanta? Oh, look at that. That is thirty five five. You said. Yeah. Wow. Scroll down time so you can see. How many miles? Seventy four one. Um, Man. And no accidents. I didn't also. realize these the things were at this price point. I'm going to start recommending these to everybody. Do they have the, problems? The course, oh, yeah. The car, okay. the car, of course, has an Achilles heel, the uh, crank hub problem. Has BMW um, ever considered, the, the and this is just a thought, has BMW ever considered making a car that operates? No, they like to just test everything on their customers. They're so pumped like for the electric fast. car and they also era. Don't, uh, they also don't care after 50,000 miles whether they care. It's out of the lease period. And that's the electric car era is going to change BMW because they no longer will have to answer for their poor... No, as, as I've stated previously, they'll find a way. They'll, right. <laughs> they'll they will <laughs> find a way. All right, go back to the questions. Let's do what? Two more? One more? Yeah. Can we talk about the CT5V Blackwing? Yeah, okay. yeah. If a question asks about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. I have a question. <laughs> Hopefully it has a question. Um, can we talk about the CT5V no, Blackwing? No, give us... Okay, here's a good question. Florian asks, what's your favorite front-wheel drive car? I'm going to pose it to you this way. When, when I was in, in 2017, I got married, and I was in the bathroom uh, uh, during the wedding, and my friend Sam walked up to me, Sam Cates, and he said to me, he said, um, Doug, it was my wedding day, you know. We had just exchanged vows, very beautiful. He said to me, he said, Doug, <laughs> if you had to buy one front-wheel drive <laughs> car, <laughs> what would it be? And we agreed in the bathroom then and there that it would probably be a Mini Cooper, but I will have you guys answer. All right, there's two answers. First of all, I legitimately love my Fiat 500 to Barth. Great. Yeah, that's, that's a great that's and that, front wheel. The second but. answer is a Fiat Multipla. Okay, Kenan. Kenan's never considered the idea of a front wheel drive also, car. Fiesta ST, probably up there. Yeah, too. Fiesta ST. I, that, I was thinking one of the hot Fords. You, you, yeah. And if you're curious, you can get a BMW, a 2 Series, that's <laughs> Active Tour. Would, well, would or the, the regular. Two Series Grand Coupe now. You, you can even That's get true. one here. Yeah. But the Two Series well, the, Active I, Tour. I, th- I thought they called it the, the, the Active Coupe Tour. The Active Tour is the minivan. Yeah, yeah, Grand Tour. Kenan wants if one there's of those. no Hoffmeister, can't get them, consider it. 
You wear with the Hoffmeister, the Hoffmeister <laughs> King. <laughs> you wear this. Yeah, it was to make it look rear wheel drive. I get it. I, they put it on all the cars. It's supposed to point towards. The do, do the front wheel drive BMWs not have that? That's right. I don't do, believe the two series do. active tour doesn't have a Hoffmeister kink. Is Hoffmeister the fellow who killed his son? No. <laughs> no. Okay. See. So, I'm trying to find a good side pusher. There is no good side pusher. That car no, has, has the Hulk Hulk Mr. Mr. King. You, you, Hulk first Hulk off, you lied to me. Second, you've pulled up a picture. You've ruined my day by pulling up a picture of the <laughs> worst wrong. BMW God, ever I to ima- be imagined. And thus, the answer to this question, but I no, would take the Mini Cooper Coupe that's here in the office. That's you would car. take a Fiesta ST or a 500 Barth, and I will stick you, Kenan, with a BMW 2 Series Active Tour. Done. Okay, let's do one more question. All right. Kenan, please. Let's see. I, I love the one that Kenan is. Um, I'll take this one from Brayden. What's your favorite version of the Gardo? Uh, the first generation Superleger Gar- Gardo yeah. Superleger is my favorite. Um, most, I think partially because of the Top Gear. Like, I don't know. I just cemented in my head of like just being an insane car. Uh, they also made that one with a manual, and they are exceedingly rare, of course. And I, I suspect one day that will be a million-dollar car, a first-gen Superleger with a six-speed. Um, but I love those cars. And I actually think value-wise right now, they are insanely undervalued. Um, We've sold one. We have we sold did. two. Sold two. Uh, oh, well, wow. I deleted believe. all that. Because you think he can't spell Superleger? He, he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 sure. But if you're Gardo, it's faster to find it. Boom. 140 for know, this particular one. 140 for That one's tip. Yeah, yeah of course. It is. Um, but nonetheless, like, I just think those cars are so cool. Um, Go back to the Gallardo's results. Okay, the, I think that the answer to this question is an 04 yellow coupe on Cassiopeia's with a stick. The original OG. The original Gallardo. To me, yeah. that's a Gallardo. Filippo, what is your favorite uh, Gallardo you know, variant? I don't have one. <laughs> Spend very little time thinking about Gallardos. Really? Because I would think that you, of all people, would really get it's into really the Gallardo. It's really surprising. It's not the Balboni or the Super Trofeo Stradale? I do like the Balboni. My favorite Balboni incident was I was at Amelia Island, and I saw Balboni. And I'm like, whoa, you can never see those cars. And then who got out of it? Balboni. <laughs> Balboni. Yeah. That's was he driving his own, or he was in someone else's? I don't, who knows? But, I mean, is Balboni getting out of a car with his name on it? That's it's pretty like legit. Shelby sign on your dashboard, right. or you got a Shelby. Right. Yep, it was pretty cool. I think I have a picture of it somewhere. All right, but. do one last question. Okay, we'll do one last question. Someone asked somewhere, why do we not like the Ferrari SF90? SF90. I saw that somewhere in here. Yeah, yeah. I, I did as well. Ian S. writes, Doug, why do you say the SF90 is bad? Ho, ho, ho. Let me count the ways. First so. off, it looks like all the other Ferraris, despite the fact that it costs $800,000. So for $250,000, maybe, I don't know, what does a, two, what does a 488 cost? You have the exact same vehicle. Second, <laughs> they're, I'm not exaggerating that. Second, they're not making it Limited. So you spend $800,000 and Ferrari will protect your investment by making 7 million of these things. The only problem, of course, being that Ferrari cannot sell them either. Right. Uh, and that is the problem with the SF90. It does not look distinctive enough to be special. And the market has proven it because resale is in the tank. For the first time, Ferrari's having to deal with a car that, well, the Roma, I suppose, and the California and all them. I mean, those cars sell, but, you know, it's, they have to be pushed a little. SF90 has been a Unmitigated. It's the first time spot. within that in that price in that range. price yeah. point that Ferrari has ever released a super crazy car that n- dropped like a stone in value. What is your favorite new Ferrari? Um, the SP3 is the great I, one of the greatest Ferraris. Yeah, SP3. Me. Besides that, oh, I can't take the SP3. No, why? Because it costs six billion dollars. <laughs> 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 well, what is your favorite? The two nine six. Somebody can. Bo- the two nine six is an unbelievable car. The two nine six. Did you drive the one we had? I didn't get to no. I only had it for like a day. Yeah, I know. And, and it, it was right at the something. end of our track day, too. Like yeah. We came back, so it was like bad timing, unfortunately. That car is so good. It looks good. It dr- Why would anyone buy an SF90 when there is a 296? Good, and mo- crucially, the general populace, populace cannot distinguish no, them. So it's not like you went out and bought an F50 and you got a huge wing and you can flex on people and you show up at Kenan's house with your wing and you steal Kenan's girl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Right. It's a way to be that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Can be if, I had an F50, if I had an F50, I could, you know, that, that's like, but and, and, uh, a 296. That's, that's part of the carbon fiber structure. The really and I would explain that to Kenan's girl. I'd be like, you know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. 
But the 296 and the SF90 look identical, but the 296 is better. And by the way, it's a third of the price. Buy a 296. Do Filippo, a bit. Filippo, do you have any parting thoughts? I don't, except that we should have talked about the CT5V CT Blackwing. We also have Blackwing. a CT5V Blackwing, 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 which is Ken's dream car. Ken's dream car. One of my dream cars, uh, and this one has a manual, yep. as it should be optioned. And covers um, ceramic brakes. But yeah, these cars are... Optioned. Well, yeah, it is, because like you can get the automatic one, sure, if you can't drive manual, all right. But this is the <laughs> end of the line. <laughs> This is the end of the line for cars like this. Big, powerful sedans with manual transmissions, which is my kind of car. Uh, and this one, of course, has manual. Kenan sometimes situation. talks about buying this alongside his E3995. I will one day. Many Mark years ago, words. I had one of these as a press car, and I made the mistake of letting Kenan drive it briefly. I drove, no, I drove it for like, well, I guess it was brief. Well, the problem was, like was that it was brief. I think if I had let him like, take it home for a couple nights, he wouldn't. But he, he, because he only had such a little taste. Right. But it was wonderful. It's wonderful. It's amazing. It's an amazing car. Uh, and just, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, the, uh, but it is true. Like, even the time I drove, because you mentioned it to me, like, you experience actual range, ang- range anxiety with a gasoline powered <laughs> car. Right. It, I, we did the math, like, uh, Kevin and I, when we were driving it, and we were getting four miles to the gallon. Holy shit. And I, now I wasn't being particularly, I wasn't concerned with, like, taking it easy, but. <laughs> It was, it was just amazing. A car of that size handled that well. You could shift your own gears in a very nice manual transmission, too. Right. Sounded great. Looked super subtle. Like, just everything I would like I it wanted. known that I would certainly get better gas mileage than that. <laughs> and and I, th- th- I, th- I, think it, I think an appropriate parting <laughs> thought is I live on a pretty short street. By the end of my block, I was in third gear. Oh, my God, Filippo. And that, I think, is all we need to say for the rest of the live show. <laughs> it was like the third sin. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Well, we so drive manual transmissions differently. He Kenan, I agree with you completely. It is a no, tremendously car. special car. I'm always thrilled when you have it on the site. I love yeah. this car. And I think that the market has not yet realized just how special this car is. In part because I think the market is trying to feel out how many they're going to make. It's also not, yeah, exactly. It's new and currently in production. So we'll see when it ends. But, you know, if, this, if the CTSV wagon of the of, you know, couple generations goes anything to go by. Even stick CTSVs on that gen, sedans. Yeah, still do well. Yeah, they still, still do, do like well. shockingly Actually, well for sure. a Cadillac. Because a base CTS from that era is a $2,100 car on Craigslist. Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. Exactly. With mismatched Second Chinese yes. tires. So, yeah. A well. V wag a V manual sedan is like what thirty five. They still look good, by the way. They do still look good. Tech was bad, but they look so good. Not as good as this though. No, this, this is, is this is the best. This, this is will the go one. down as the best Cadillac. The Cadillac of by the way, best front wheel drive car, the seventies Eldorado with cow horns on the hood. And that's where we end. And that's where we end. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.